There are many different types of sewing machines available today. Some are mechanical and some are electronic or computerized. Regardless of the machine model you have, there are basic parts that nearly all sewing machines have in common. These parts may be located in different places on the machine, depending on model, but their functions will essentially be the same. Consult your machine manual for specific location of these parts on your model. The hand wheel is located on the right side of the machine and is used to manually move the needle up and down. Always turn it toward you or counterclockwise. Turn the hand wheel to lower the needle down into the fabric when pivoting or turning corners. The needle should be raised out of the fabric for removing work from the machine when choosing a new stitch pattern or for threading. Some electronic or computerized machines have a needle up-down feature, which means the needle will always stop in the down position if the feature is activated. Check your machine manual for specifics on your model if it has this feature. Sewing machines have a selection of stitches from which to choose. Some machines are designed to sew only basic stitches, while others add a selection of stretch stitches and decorative stitches. Some electronic or computerized models may also offer alphanumeric patterns for sewing letters and numbers. On mechanical machines, stitches are selected by moving a lever or dial. Once the stitch has been selected, you will need to then manually set the stitch length and stitch width setting for that stitch, depending on the look you want. On electronic or computerized machines, the optimal stitch length and stitch width are set automatically when the stitch is selected, but you can adjust these if you wish. The stitch length control can be adjusted to sew stitches shorter or longer. Shorter stitches are better for lighter weight fabrics or when you are working with a finer thread and needle. Longer stitches are better for heavier fabrics or thread or when working with a larger needle. On mechanical machines, stitch length is adjusted by moving a dial. On electronic or computerized machines, though the optimal setting is set upon selection of the stitch, further adjustment of the stitch length is done with either a lever or with push buttons, depending on machine model. The stitch width control can be set to make stitches so narrower or wider, depending on the look you want. For mechanical machines, this is done by turning a dial or lever. For electronic or computerized machines, though the optimal setting is set upon the selection of the stitch, further adjustment of the stitch width can be done either with a lever or by push button. For most machines, you can also use the stitch width control to adjust the position of the needle when the machine is set for straight stitch. The reverse sewing control is used for sewing stitches in reverse. You can use the reverse lever or button to secure the beginning and end of a seam to keep the stitches from coming undone. On some electronic or computerized machines, the reverse sewing control can also be used to tie off decorative machine stitches. The machine's presser foot is the part of the machine that comes in contact with the fabric from the top. When the presser foot lifter is lowered, the presser foot comes down and puts pressure on the fabric. The presser foot works with the feed dogs, which are like little rows of teeth under the fabric, to draw the fabric through from the bottom side. Sewing machines come with a general purpose or all purpose presser foot already on the machine. In addition, there is a large variety of optional presser feet available, 
for various sewing functions. Many of these will be shown later in this program. The presser foot lifter is used to raise and lower the presser foot. The presser foot lifter also controls the tension discs which are located inside the machine. This is important because by raising the presser foot lifter, the tension discs can receive the thread. Once the machine is threaded, fabric is placed under the foot for sewing. The presser foot is then lowered, putting tension on the thread. The take-up lever is the part of the machine that pulls thread through the upper thread tension control while the stitch is being formed. On some machines, the take-up is visible and on some it is concealed. On some models, the thread take-up is even controlled digitally. Feed dogs are located under the presser foot. They move in a front-to-back motion to draw the fabric through the machine as you sew. There may be times when you need to disengage the feed dogs, for example when free motion sewing to do stipple quilting. In this case, you manually control the fabric movement. Some machines have a drop feed feature, which means that you can simply raise or lower the feed dogs as needed. If your machine does not have the drop feed feature, the feed dogs will need to be covered for free motion sewing. Use a feed dog cover plate, sometimes called a darning plate, to keep the fabric from coming in contact with the feed dogs. To re-engage feed dogs that have been lowered, release the lever or switch and then turn the hand wheel counterclockwise one full revolution. The needle plate is also called a stitch plate. It sits on the bed of the machine around the feed dogs. It has a hole in it through which the needle passes while sewing. There are seam guidelines on the needle plate and sometimes on the bobbin cover plate to help you guide the edge of the fabric accurately when sewing whichever seam allowance you need. The seam allowance is the distance from the stitching line to the raw edges of the fabrics. Some machines indicate these specific seam allowance measurements directly on the plate, while others have evenly spaced lines as guides. 